Now in this video, we will talk about the types of system because by now we have understood what is a thermodynamic system and what are thermodynamic surroundings. Okay, so let's start by understanding uh, the type of system that we have. Okay, the first type of system that we have is an open system. Okay, the second kind of system that we have is a closed system. And the third kind of system that we have is an isolated system. Let me write down one more kind of system, but we will discuss about that at the end of all these three systems. And that is an adiabatic system. Okay, adiabatic system. We will come to that at the end of this video. Okay, so let's first of all understand the difference that lies between open closed and isolated system all right as i told you that in thermodynamics we deal with energy interaction so energy interaction can be in the form of heat interaction work interaction okay and there is also some inflow and outflow of mass happening in, in in a particular system so if you talk about an open system open means that there is no restriction to the inflow and outflow of the energy to and from the system and also there is no restriction of the inflow and outflow of mass to and from the system. So if you draw a diagram or a schematic to understand and to define the open system. So this is how you can draw it. So this is the schematic of an open system. Okay. You have some mass which comes in. Mass which comes in. You have some mass which goes out, all right, and this red dotted line becomes the system boundary. Okay, so this is my open system. Okay, through which mass can flow in and you know go out. Also, you have energy which can go in and go out. So let me create some heat inflow or uh, let, let's put it energy. Let's not uh, particularly look at only uh, heat only. So let's say energy in and you have some energy out. Okay, so you have both uh, mass and energy going in and out of the system. So this becomes an open system. All right, now let's come to closed. In closed system, you have the energy interaction taking place to and from the system, but there is no mass inflow and outflow so for example if you take a piston cylinder arrangement so let me draw one for you so this is a rigid cylinder and a piston inside it so this is the piston okay this is the piston now in this your system is the volume of gases which is entrapped inside the piston and the cylinder arrangement that is on top of the piston head and below the cylinder head so this is the system that we have that we are observing for thermodynamic study so this is the system okay now you can see that this volume of gases or this volume of gas can either accept heat from the outside or some energy from the outside okay or it can reject the energy or heat to the surroundings so this is energy in and this is energy out but as you can see that the volume the mass of the gases not volume but only mass volume can you know change it can expand it can uh, you can say be compressed so the mass of the gases inside this arrangement will not change okay so in a in a in a very simplified manner we can say that this mass inflow and outflow which is happening in the open system is not a part of the closed system so there is no mass inflow or outflow so i can say mass in mass out this is zero nothing is going in nothing is going out so whatever that you know that is there in the system before you start observing it it will stay at the end of the analysis also so there is no mass inflow or outflow but there is some energy inflow and energy outflow all right now let's go to the next kind of the system which is called the isolated system now what is an isolated system now first of all an isolated system 
is a special kind of closed system. So these two are linked because isolated is a special case of closed. Okay. So what is happening? In a closed system, there is no mass inflow and outflow. Nothing is going in, nothing is going out in terms of mass. But there is something which is going in and there is something which is going out in terms of the energy. But if I am able to reduce these energy interactions also to zero, that is energy which is going in becomes equal to energy which is going out which is equal to zero. Nothing is going in, nothing is going out in terms of mass and energy, then it becomes an isolated system. So you can see isolated system is a special case of closed system. Why is it linked? Because we base this on no mass inflow or outflow from the system. So yes, it is a kind of a closed system, but a special one because there is no energy interaction to and from the system as well. So in a closed system, which does not have any energy interaction to and from the system is called an isolated system. I hope you understood this concept, not a very difficult one. Okay. Now I I also talked about another kind of system, which I don't call the fourth kind of system, but it's also a special case like the isolated one. And that is the adiabatic system. Now what is an adiabatic system? Now adiabatic system is a special case of an open system. So you can link the adiabatic and the open system. Let's link these two. All right. Now, as you saw in the isolated case, we put a restriction on the flow of energy in, in, the, in the closed system, isn't it? So there is no, if, if we restrict the energy interaction to and from the system in a closed system, it becomes isolated. Now, what do we have to restrict? in the open system to make it adiabatic? A very good question. Now see, in an open system, you can have mass in and mass out. So yes, that will happen in the adiabatic system also. But the restriction lies only in the form of heat interaction. You have energy interaction. Yes, there will be energy interaction in adiabatic system also. But the only restriction will be in the interaction of heat to and from the system. There is no heat interaction to and from the system. So this is zero only. So energy restriction or energy interaction is only there in the form of work or some other form of energy, but not in the form of heat. Okay. So if you restrict the outflow and inflow or the interaction of system with the surrounding or vice versa for heat, for an open system, it becomes an adiabatic system. So this is a very, very simple concept to understand. Now, if you take some examples of uh, the adiabatic system. So for example, if I take a water pump, so this can be water pump, wherein water is coming in what and water is going out, you're putting some energy into the pump and some energy is being, you know, thrown out in the system in, 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 the, in the surroundings. Now, if you talk about adiabatic systems, let me take the case of a turbine. Uh, in particular a steam turbine. Okay, so let's take the case of a steam turbine. Now this steam turbine on the boundary, it is insulated. So there is some insulation at the boundary of the turbine. Okay, so whatever steam or whatever heat that the steam brings in, this is steam coming in and this is steam going out. I would not call it steam, but it is more of a condensate, a mixture of steam and uh, water. Okay, so there is some mass inflow and some mass outflow. So this makes it an open system. All right. Okay. Now you also have a shaft over here and an alternator, which produces some electricity, provided that this steam turbine is a part of a, uh, you, you can say, power generation plant. Now. When this mass inflow happens, so this steam imparts some part of its energy to the turbine blades. Okay. So these blades are, are mounted on the turbine shaft, which produces some shaft work output. So there is an energy interaction taking place in terms of work output from the system. But 
there is no heat loss which is occurring from the turbine casing because it is insulated okay so this becomes an adiabatic process all right so this is something that you need to understand uh, between adiabatic and open system so adiabatic becomes a special case of open system all right so i hope you understood uh, the different kind of systems that we have for thermodynamic analysis now after this let's discuss in the next video about macroscopic and microscopic points of view